Okay, once you found the top zip codes, now you need ways to find motivated sellers. The first way is direct mail. Direct mail is when you mail a letter or a postcard directly to the homeowner's address, asking them to purchase their property. In order to send a letter or a postcard, you have to purchase or get a list of sellers and their address. You need the seller's address so you can send the letters to the sellers. This, for me, this is the most effective marketing for my business, direct mail. Okay, and direct mail again, I'm just giving you little tips of what works for me. Light blue or pink letters work the best. You want either light blue or pink letters. As of right now, I just switched back over to the white letter paper. I will leave a link down in the description below of my exact letters that I send out. I will give you the text that I use, all of that information of what I send out. You want to use invitation envelopes. Any type of invitation envelopes work good. You want them to actually open up your letters because they're, they're receiving a lot of letters from a lot of different wholesalers. So you want them to look at your letter and wonder, hey, what is this? Let me open this letter. You want to use handwritten font. Do not use font that looks tight. Use handwritten font. You want to be different. Don't use the same verbiage as everyone else. Be different. The key is to get them to open your letter, like I said before. Get them to open your letter. You want your letter to stand out. This way, this marketing tactic is more expensive than most of the other marketing, but this works the best for me. Okay, and direct mail postcards is the second way of marketing that I have here. This way is a little cheaper than a direct mail. And this, I want you guys to send out, if you do postcards, I want you to send this out every Friday for five to seven weeks. I want you to send postcards out to the same exact list that you purchase. Send it out five to seven weeks. Marketing is key. You want to be consistent. That's the way that you're going to get deals. And this way, this type of marketing is better because they don't have, once they receive it in the mail, they don't have to open anything up. Once they receive it, they can see it and look at it and see exactly what you're trying to say. Some markets, postcards works better. You just have to test out your market to see which way works best for you for as far as direct mail or postcards. And don't use the same verbiage as everyone else. You don't want to be the exact same because once they they constantly see everyone else's and if you're different, they're just going to look at it and throw it away just like they do everyone else. I want you guys to be different. Okay, and another way is return mail. Once you send out these direct mail campaigns, you're going to receive a lot of return mail. In most cases, they will have a yellow sticker on the return mail. So what you're going to do is they have the updated address of where the homeowner moved to. What you're going to do is send a new letter or a postcard to the new address. Or you can research and find the homeowner on Facebook, white pages, etc., you can have some luck that way as well. The return mail is a great lead source because other investors do not take the time out to find these homeowners. You're going to make a lot of money doing things that other people hate to do. And also you can skip trace to find the homeowners for, for, for the return mail. Go to TLO.com. That's a good skip trace website a current and find the seller.com. These are a few good skip tracing websites for you guys. 
Okay, in direct mail, in order to mail the letter or postcards, you need to purchase a list of the property owners or get a list from somewhere. I'm going to show you exactly how you can go ahead and get the list so you can start sending out letters or postcards. And these are the different types of lists. Absentee owners list, free and clear list, probate list, fire damage list, pre foreclosure list, tax delinquent list, just to name a few. And these are the definitions of the list. I'm not going to go and read verbatim exactly what these lists are. You can read them yourself. And I also have them down in the description box of the, the each one of these phrases are in the glossary. So you know exactly what the list is and what do I mean when I speak of the list. Okay, guys, and these are different ways you can get each one of the lists. An investor-friendly realtor can give you an absentee owner or a pre-foreclosure list. Your county's tax department, they can give you a tax delinquent list. The county courthouse, they can give you a probate list. And Melissa Data, which I use myself, melissadata.com, you can get an absentee owner list. I know other investors who use list source and also US lead list, but I myself use melissadata.com to pull my absentee owner list. Okay, and this these are ways to get the tax delinquent list. You Google Hillsborough County or whatever county you're in, Google your county tax department or any county that you're targeting. Google that county's tax department and you call them up or you can go over to their office. I would much rather call them up is spending less of your time. Call them up and ask them for the tax delinquent list. If they do not understand for some reason, because sometimes they don't be knowledgeable of all of this information, just ask them for a list of properties that are behind or on their taxes. Okay, and how to get a probate list, you want to go down to your local courthouse and go to the service desk. Ask them exactly where is their probate office. Go to the probate office in my city. They have a book that you get the files from. Other states and cities, they have all of this information online, so you don't even have to leave your house. But being that I'm in Tampa, I have to go down to the courthouse. Most states are online, but there are a few states that you do have to go down to the courthouse to get this information. And if you need is help or assistance, please go to the front desk, ask them anything. They would, if they have to, they would go and show you exactly how to go and get this information. Just contact your courthouse. And this is a way that you can get the probate information. And also while you're in there writing down the probate information, I want you to write down the probate attorney's name, email, and phone number. So you can contact them. That can be another way that you can purchase a property. And if they don't help you with the probate that you have, just ask them, hey, do you have any more clients that are willing to sell their property? These are all ways to get more deals. Okay, I have the probate list, now what? So what you're gonna do now is send the probate direct mail letter to the homeowners of the property and link in the description of a exact template that I use to send for my probate leads to the homeowners. You're gonna send a letter every week for maybe five to six weeks. Make sure you keep sending the letters because sometimes things happen. You don't know if they're in a rush. They had to just lay the letter down. And the next time you send it, they can say, hey, I remember this. So make sure you're consistent with your marketing. And also, I'm going to put in, in the description below an email template of what I send the attorneys of the probate. 
And if they, if the attorney doesn't reply to your email, I will go ahead and give the attorney a call and let them know what exactly what you're trying to do. Okay. And this is exactly how you're going to get the absentee owner list. This is Melissa data. This is what I use to pull my list. They have other websites that have absentee owner lists as well, but this is the website that I use. So when you go on to melissadata.com and you're going to get this screen here, you're going to hover over direct mail and click on property. And then you're going to come to this page here. Then you're going to click on get free count. And then this page, you're going to go ahead and enter the zip code from the hot zip codes that we showed that I showed you how to get earlier. Enter whatever zip code you want to focus on first. Enter that zip code here and enter click add count. Make sure you click add count. Next, you're going to go down to property type and make sure you select single family residence, duplex, triplex, or quadplex. Make sure both are selected. And go down to sell date. Go to the sell date tab. And I, what I normally do is I always go back 10 years from the current date for the two date. I always go back 10 years and for, from the from date, I go back 50 to 70 years for more houses. Okay. Once you enter that information, you're going to go down and go to the owner type, make sure each box that's selected here, make sure each box is selected. Okay, and what these boxes are is the, you want absentee owners only. Absentee owner is a person who owns a property that doesn't live in the property. These are the people that you want to target, the people who own them but don't live there. You want to make sure that you select private owners only. You don't want any corporations or LLCs inside your list. And for the first list, you're going to go ahead and select any county owners. Go down and click update counts. Okay. And down at the bottom, you're going to see the number of records of all of the absentee owners in that zip code. So the next step is go, go down to the right, the bottom right of the, page and click next step. Okay. And as you can see for a total of 839 records, you're only paying $117 and 46 cents. That is a great deal. Go ahead and purchase the list. Make sure you select the dot CSV file and go down to and click next step. And if you're not signed in, you're going to come to this page and go ahead and create an account. I already have an account, but go ahead and create an account so you can complete purchasing the list. And once you create an account, you're going to come to this page and I want you to enter the job name. I normally do whatever zip code that I'm doing for at the time. I just enter the job name as that zip code so I can stay organized and then click check out, click there, check out. And then you just pick which way you would like to pay. If you would like to go ahead and pay through PayPal or a, or check out with your debit card. If you check out with your debit card, click check out with credit card. Okay, and now you have the list purchased on Melissa data. And once you go ahead and purchase the in county list like you just did, I want you to go back and purchase the out of county list. Go back and enter all of the same information in all of the tabs and click here 
instead of clicking in county this time select out of county so you can get both in county and out of county do not make the mistake that i did by going to in-state owners and out-of-state owners because one time i purchased each and every one of these lists when i first started and i found out that all of the information for the in county is the same for inside the county when you want to get out of state owners do not select out of state go ahead and select out of county because everything every owner out of county you're going to get so out of county includes in state and out of state so just go ahead and purchase the out of county list so you want to make sure you purchase the in county and out of county list and then you're going to see down at the bottom the number of records will would change for you once you select out of county just go ahead and go down and go to next step and complete the purchase just how you did for the very first list okay and now you have the list so now what what do you do now i'm going to show you exactly what to do now once you purchase the list you're going to send out a yellow letter or a postcard like i explained to you earlier different ways to market ye yellow letter or postcards and what i normally do is i send the postcard for the very first time because it's cheaper and you know exactly what address gets returned and once you receive that return address you can go ahead and update that and send the letter the second time second time through the seventh or eighth time send the letter the rest of the mailings and make sure you use handwritten font that's the best way to send the yellow letters and you want to use invitation envelopes for higher open rates because most people don't always receive invitation envelopes. They only receive invitation envelopes for rare occasions like a wedding or any events like that. So you want to make sure you send an invitation envelopes. But if you don't, if the invitation envelopes are a little bit too expensive, what I do is I go to the dollar store and instead of getting the bit long envelopes, I get the shorter envelopes and just fold up my letters to fit the envelope and stuff it in there and send it off. And guys, this is very key. Your money is in the list direct mail key pointers are right here you want to follow up keep following up follow up is key mail to your list at least six to seven times to the same exact list you don't want to keep switching lists and only mail to each one one time mail to the same exact list six to seven times and be consistent every three to four weeks you want to mail again to that same exact list mail to the same list every 30 to 60 days please do not go over 60 days you want to be consistent guys you're not going to get deals if you keep mailing you mail one month then wait three to four months to mail to the same list again make sure you keep mailing to the same list another way to find motivated sellers is the for sale by owner signs this is a method of selling your property without the use of an agent or a broker. I know many of you guys have seen these signs all around your town. These are another possible way to find deals. Give that number a call and down in the description below, I have a link to the for sale by owner script that once you call, you will give all the information or have them give you all the information that you need. Okay, and driving for dollars is another strategy you can use to find motivated sellers. Driving for dollars is just riding around your neighborhood, finding properties that look distressed, finding properties that look vacant, abandoned, boarded up, code violations, old properties. These are the things that you want to be looking for when you're riding around in your car driving for dollars. These are possible deals. Riding around, I know 
in every neighborhood, there are a few abandoned houses. Write those houses down. Write the address down to the property. Okay, when you're driving for dollars, you found the property, now what? So what you're going to do is write the address down. When you're driving for dollars, I have a link in the description box for a driving for dollars info sheet. Just fill out all of the information of the property. And what you want to go ahead and find out who owns the property on the tax assessor's website. So what you're going to do to find out who owns that property, you can go ahead and Google your county tax assessor. So for me, I enter Hillsborough County Tax Assessor, being that I'm located in Hillsborough. And the website to the Hillsborough County Tax Assessor, that is hcpafl.org for you guys who are located in Tampa. Okay, just Google your Hills your county tax assessor and click on the link. For me, this is our Hillsborough County tax assessor, tax appraiser. Some call it tax assessor or tax appraiser. They're all the same. Different counties, they look a little different, but you're pretty much doing all the same information on each tax assessor or tax appraiser's website. So for us in Hillsborough County, you want to go to property search, click property search. And then down in the address tab, address box, you want to go ahead and enter the address of the property you found while driving for dollars. So go ahead and enter the address there and click search. And then you're going to come to this page. Just go ahead and click your address. Make sure that it is your address. I know sometimes multiple addresses will pop up. Make sure you select the correct address. And then this is all of the information. They're going to give you all of the information for the property. They're going to give you the owner's name. They're going to give you their mailing address that they use. And the property's address that you found, they're going to give you that information as well. So what you want to do is write down the owner's name and the owner's mailing address. That is where you're going to send the direct letters or the postcards to the mailing address. Okay, and another strategy to find motivated sellers is bandit signs. I know... Pretty much every one of you have seen these signs all around your town, whether it's for real estate, mowing grass, we buy junk cars, any signs like that. This is what you're going to want to do. Bandit signs is another good strategy for finding motivated sellers. Just write, hey, I buy houses fast for cash, any type of language. Just write that on your bandit signs. Go and hang them out all around town, and these are possible ways to find motivated sellers. And with Bennett signs, you always want to use a local number, wherever you're at. If I'm in Tampa and I start hanging out signs in St. Pete, I don't want to use a Tampa zip code. I want to use a St. Pete zip code. And these, they can be handwritten or printed. It doesn't matter. Handwritten font is better I would suggest handwritten font. You can have signs printed with handwritten font as well. And the way that you can go about purchasing these bandit signs is there's a website website called dirtcheapsigns.com. Or you can go to fastsigns.com. They're located in Tampa for printed or blank signs. Sometimes I like to get the blank signs and I can write them myself. Or you can go to Home Depot and purchase the corrugated blank signs. I recommend putting out 75 to 100 signs per week. 75 to 100 signs per week. That's the only way you're going to get consistent deals by keep putting these signs out. You can't put out 20 signs one week and then wait 
three months and then put out another 20. You got to keep these signs out and these motivated sellers face. So every time they see your sign, they can think about giving you a call or they can call you first. And what I recommend you doing is putting these signs out on Fridays. Fridays is when the city, they start to close anytime after five o'clock on Fridays, I will put them up. So you have the whole weekend to have the signs hanging up without the city's people going, coming around and taking the signs down. So put them out on Friday. I recommend hanging them out up with a sign stapler, not putting them down in the ground. A sign stapler, you can hang them up high on the electric poles, the telephone poles, because I found out once you hang them up, they're too high for the average person to go ahead and pull the signs down. So most of the time, my signs stay up until the wind either blows them down or the rain knocks them down, anything like that. And you want to buy the sign stapler online or make one at Home Depot. There's a YouTube video right now uploaded. They show you exactly how to make a sign stapler very cheap. That is exactly what I did. I made the sign stapler myself. I didn't purchase one. Another possible way to find motivated sellers is by posting on Facebook saying, hey, I buy houses. We buy houses. Post that on your Facebook as a status and have your family and friends share that post so more people can see it. Or you can go ahead and post on Facebook asking Facebook friends to refer properties to you and you will pay them a referral fee of about $500. However you feel, $500 or $1,000 is good for a referral. You can also post Facebook ads. Facebook ads is a good way to find motivated sellers. Just post Facebook ads stating, stating that you would like to purchase properties in your local market. You can post Facebook videos saying you buy houses, make videos for Facebook. We buy houses websites, or you can make YouTube videos saying you buy houses. You can post ads on Craigslist and Backpage, and you can go to GoSectionAid.com to find landlords who are looking to rent their properties out. Most of the landlords, they are willing to sell their properties. So just go to GoSectionAid.com and enter your market and just go to calling all the landlords to see if they would like to sell their property. Or you can go to online auction sites as HUDHomeStore.com, HomeSearch.com, Auction.com, HubZoo.com, and BidForAccess.com. These, you have to do a double closing. You can't do a traditional wholesale deal. I will talk about double closing later in this video. So stay tuned, keep listening, keep watching this video so you can learn every detail to wholesale and real estate.